to get you that interview that we had lined up earlier on but had a problem with the audio. We have fixed that. And like I said, this, that was Dr. Ahmed Kalebi, who's the Chief Consultant Pathologist and Group CEO at Lancet. And he is here to make us, may, help us make heads of tails of uh, the coronavirus vaccine, figure out what a level of efficacy that vaccine has. And my first question to you, uh, Dr. Tari, is does it mean that one will never get the virus once they get vaccinated? Uh, not at all, actually. Uh, because basically the vaccine, what the vaccine does is that it tricks the body into mounting an immune response before the person gets uh, exposed to the virus. In such a way, almost like what will happen in a drill for, let's say, firefighters. So you actually have a false fire that allows the firefighters to practice and such that when the real thing comes, they are better prepared to handle it. But it doesn't mean that the fire will not happen in the first place. So basically, when somebody actually gets exposed to the virus, if they have been vaccinated before, their body is better able to fight the virus, but it takes a few days before they actually mount that immune response. Okay. So it doesn't mean that you cannot get the virus, but it means that when you get it, your body is able to eliminate it very, very quickly. That means you get very sick and no, nobody who gets vaccinated will die of the virus. Okay, but then that leads me to the next question. Then after getting the, the vaccine, how long after are you safe? Uh, so, number one, you are not absolutely safe completely. That is, it does not give you 100% protection okay. from not getting the virus. However, once you have been vaccinated, it takes about a week to two weeks before your body has mounted sufficient response to be able to actually fight the virus if they can get exposed to the virus better. Okay, and far from that, then another big question, because even from the stories we've gotten from Tanzania, the people are saying that they are feeling uh, stifled when they have to wear masks. So one would imagine, I'm, uh, a layman would imagine, that they would not need to wear a mask after getting the vaccine. What say you? You, you need to continue wearing the mask. In fact, somebody gave a very good analogy and says, when you wear a bulletproof vest, it protects you from bullets. But yes. it doesn't mean that you can just go out there and tell people to shoot you. The fact that you're actually wearing a bulletproof vest does not mean that you become careless. You need to still protect yourself. You need to keep things away from harm. Mm -hmm. So for those people who have had the vaccine, they still need to continue. Because number one, if they do get infected, it will be very brief. But at that period, they can still infect others. Mm -hmm. Number two, by wearing masks, you actually increase your protection. Because remember, the vaccine efficacy is between 60 to 90 percent which means there's still a 10% chance you can get infected and get mild to moderate disease. Okay, and Governor Kiraitu Murugi seemed to have fallen into that percentage of people who can, of, of the possibility of getting the vaccine. Could you explain that to Kenyans in, in a, simple, a simple way that they can understand what happened with that particular case? I think for Governor Kiraitu Murugi, I don't have all the specifics, but remember he got, he was diagnosed to have COVID within a very short time after he was vaccinated, it was yes. than actually a week or two weeks, which means the vaccine had not actually taken full effect and perhaps he was even already infected by the time he was being given the vaccine. So the vaccine did not fail, so to speak. He actually got the virus as he was vaccinated or during that period when the vaccine was still working on his body to get the immunity. Uh -huh. Now, well, lastly, do you, what, what do you make of this third wave that seems to be deadlier than the first two? And also, can we look forward to a time where we won't have a coronavirus amongst us? Because there's a lot of fatigue surrounding this and perhaps explains, it explains the laxity when it comes to some of the measures. Let me, ask, let me start by the last question. I mm. think people have to be prepared uh, that this virus will be here with us for a long, long time. Actually, we are projecting that we'll continue seeing wave after wave, although they might be diminishing, up to even 2020, end of 2022 to 2023, until we have sufficient herd immunity across the world, people have been vaccinated. So we'll experience this for a long time, wave after wave. Now, the third wave, it looks up deadlier than the previous one, but actually the second wave was the worst. Right now, the positive rate is high, but remember, with the, first, with the second wave, we even had a positive rate of even up to 20%. I think because people are more vigilant, people are more aware, now we are reporting more cases, but I actually think the cases are underreported. So mm. we are in the middle of the third wave. People are dying. I think everybody needs to remember that it can be any of us. We need to protect ourselves. Mm.
Okay, thank you very much, Dr. Ahmed Kalebi, for making the time to join us and help us understand the efficacy of the coronavirus vaccines. He is the Chief Consultant Pathologist and Group CEO at Lancet. Now, moving on, even as Tanzanians continue to mourn their departed leader, 